all right good morning everyone thank you for joining earlier in the day today uh, hope i am audible yes yes yeah that's a quick check that i i you know people are attentive or not or still losing off in their <laughs> chess <laughs> all right so let me share my screen um and i'm glad that everybody is being on time and uh, joining so that's great okay let me share my screen so uh, we are going to be covering three principles today i hope am i i i had shared my screen right yeah okay yeah so we are going to be we are going to be um, looking at three principles today so um, what we'll do is once uh, we discuss one principle we'll probably take uh, probably take one or two questions or reflections and then move ahead so, so that we are able to cover everything today and if we get some time at the end of this session we will talk uh, a bit more about each of these and any kind of queries reflections feedback thoughts are there we can talk about right and then we also have a session tomorrow which is at 10 o'clock we can deep dive into each of these and if there are any kind of uh, conflicting thoughts all of that can come up in those sessions all right so uh, first is uh, error prevention i think um, this this is fifth principle the way they have at least named it is really very upfront clear there is no ambiguity that is there right everybody understands what is an error prevention before an error occurs you would want to prevent that error so if you look at this visual that is there it is all uh, showing you that there are side ra railings on a turn right so even if some some vehicle is speeding uh at least there is a prevention that it will not topple down the road so they have taken that um that care that okay you uh, know the, the vehicles don't really drop off especially if it's a, on a bridge or if it is a valley that is there so that's preventing a problem from occurring correct and you will see other examples on the user interface okay but let's move ahead okay and this is what we spoke about preventing problems before they occur extremely important right so we have seen so many in user interfaces we have seen so many areas where um, you know they uh, and gradually it has changed so areas where there were used to be open fields for dates uh, and uh, uh, you know no suggestions on what has to be added uh, if it is an, a numeric just a numeric field then there was no uh, mention that it is just a numeric field or there was no constraint gradually that has changed so we are there is definitely um, how we have evolved uh, from a aspect of user interface uh, it is really you know somewhere we have gone ahead with putting a lot of constraints and we are still learning okay so you know how this principle categorizes between two things uh, when it comes to errors one is slips and another is mistakes what are slips that uh, you accidentally do something okay and these are really accidental errors uh, you and what happens when do, when typically do accidents occur if you just reflect in real life also when you are really focused on certain things uh, on uh, while you're driving for example right you're driving somewhere and you are really focused uh, this is a new road let me just look at uh, things uh, uh, am i riding in the right place and all of that rarely you may go wrong but if it is you know something that is your routine or road and you know ha pata hai mujhe main kahan ja raha hu types uh, so you will be kind of casual and that is the time when you are somewhere off guard that is when typically accidents occur okay that is that is what they are categorizing as slips okay so these are slips happen usually by seasoned users so if you are looking you know if you are typing something on your mobile usually there are you know you're typing so fast now you have got used to your mobile and the keyboard on your mobile that you can type really fast but there are so many times that you know there you know you might just by error by a slip you could just type in some other letter right so you are not really looking at the keyboard and typing one key at a time but when you are 
have accessing a new keyboard a different per, you know your friend's system for some time <clears throat> that is when you're really focusing on uh, keys and that is where that is that is not the category where slips occur okay what are mistakes uh, exactly the opposite right mistakes occur that when somebody is full in com complete conscious okay um, is expected to reach a goal uh, is taking care of things however still there are some error that occurs okay why do those uh, errors occur and these are mistakes why do these occur is because probably they still have don't have the mental model of how the, these things are going to be working right and this is again if you have entered a building and you have you are looking at all signages and still you land up on a wrong place okay and you say oh but i was i was sure uh, uh, i looked at all signages but still i have come to a wrong place so that's something because your mental model is still not created for you are exploring a new place okay and that is typically when you um, when mistakes occur okay so these are different ways in which uh, um, errors are categorized so that when you are approaching those as a solution uh, you would see to it that slips don't occur nor do mis mistakes occur okay now we spoke about constraints right and most of the see like for example you know and let me just go back to the previous slide so uh while this is something that we have to keep in our uh, keep uh always be aware while we are designing solutions that uh, both of these areas so even if you are it is a little like a trained user still they have could have a slip right and while you are giving a lot of guidance still users could make mistakes and what could those mistakes be are something that we have to always keep thinking about and therefore we have to keep designing right and all of these comes only when there are a lot of um, things that you can take care of while you're designing it and but there are a lot of these things layer up when you are testing your design right so we spoke about uh, solutions right for this what what are the solutions that will be there is you will really start applying constraints to things so here for example you know uh, look at the constraints that have been added here so that errors do not occur right so there are adequate constraints that are put in here so that errors do not occur in real life and you will if you reflect out in real life there are so many things when you are uh, opening your containers or closing the containers uh, your kitchen containers um lot of examples there are definitely constraints that are there so that things just don't go wrong in user interfaces also we have seen that uh there we have seen that okay this is a very good constraint that you are not going to be adding a 13 here or you are not going to be adding a 82 here right so they have limited the options um so that there is nothing that goes beyond that beyond this what you have also seen we have seen the analog clock also that so many times gets uh, reflected here so that you know what you're really setting so these are different types of constraints that you add to um, uh, for anything in the user interface where the user if it could be forms it could be any kind of um, actions that the user is taking so that the user uh, you can prevent errors right uh things like other than constraints right there are still certain mistakes or slips that the user would take and um, you know just do a double check uh before you there is a big a big um a loss of content or data that user may face so you take enough um actions uh, prevention pre preventive actions that the user doesn't really lose data right so you are preventing errors again uh, in this way uh, you know this is just one straightforward thing others are you know you typically if you are picking uh, certain things right and if you are picking multiple things it will keep showing you 
or you know something where you okay how many things that you've really picked up right so that is again uh, in the mind that okay how many how many things that i've picked up or uh, did i really uh, did i accidentally pick up something which i did not intend to i just wanted to pick up five things or i think i picked up eight things so there are ways in how you can see to it that errors can be prevented early on as early uh, as you know and more contextual that these errors can be prevented that is great rather than making the user go a few steps ahead and then say oh uh, by the way do you want to do this or do you want to do that right the early that uh, you start preventing those errors from the user and the more contextual they are th that is great okay all right so um uh, what are slips slips are common errors that happen when users do not uh, pay full attention right so this is something that we saw on the, the uh, previous slide. What are slips? These are common errors. Uh, what do you do? Confirm before. So one is you add constraints. Another is confirm before destructive actions take place. Right? Support undo. Something similar that we saw uh, in some previous principles also. Right? Warn before errors are ma made right so how many different types of warnings can you give how many different types of confirmations i mean, don't want to have overload but right place adequate information giving information uh, so that you know there are errors that can be prevented okay so this is this is this is i think one of the most simplest way of principles uh, so i don't want to really spend too much of time but any kind of thoughts that you have please feel free to discuss all right let's move on to the next one recognition rather than recall okay now this is a very interesting one uh uh huh. uh i think you know, just ask maybe two or three examples for what you have taught right now so other people will also clear like you have explained so well. So do they recollect any any example that they have seen? Yeah, sure. Okay, just give the five minutes and then let us know. Yeah, no problem. Anybody wants to pitch in and share some examples? So I'll uh, example to me is to me do part me so it's a okay error prevention take to note case up say up front to me a form me i think that is one and second is when user adds any data based on that we data fetch karke if there is an error before even submitting or clicking that call to action Correct. Before you complete that action, Correct. you show confirmation. You show, show something which is like, okay, this is how the end result is going to be. Do you want to confirm this before you probably mm -hmm. print or publish or do whatever, right? That is yeah. what you're saying. And before that also, we can like add some notes before the user enters any data. Correct. Give adequate information and explanation Correct. and yeah. constraints while the user. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Amanat, Ambalika, any example do you recollect? It's one thing that I can say that uh, when we are uh, creating any password for the first time, so there is a details about the password. So how many uh, capital forms will be there, how many numerics will be there, and these are complete uh, guidance. So that okay. there will be. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so there will be no uh, uh, misunderstood uh, while. Uh, formatting the first time for the uh, password. Yes, that's, as I said, amazing example. Because I think all of us have gone through it and we have still seen a lot of sites still don't do that, right? And uh, we land up creating a password for the first time. And after we create it, it tells you, no, no, this is not something that is acceptable. You have to add uh, some of these uh, things also, right? You know, there has to be um, uh, two, two capitals and uh, two small and all of that. So if you if you have rules, show those rules upfront rather than uh, not allowing somebody to submit. 
and go ahead also there is a, a plus point that uh, when you are fulfilling the points so there is a ticks come yes so that you can see that yeah these are done and these are not done so you have to fulfill that correct correct all right good example yeah you can move okay. ahead okay so recognition rather than recall okay uh, okay now what is recognition what is what is recall recognition is that you recognize something right in simple words you are familiar with it right you can when you look at it when you read it you are able to make sense of it it is just up front there on the screen or up front there to you for you to recognize it correct what is a recall that you have to go into your memory and think about it oh what is what what should it be here if, if i can give you a simple example all of us have um, attempted different types of uh, exams right so imagine a question which has uh, multiple choices already in place that is recognition right so there is a question what is the capital of the country and there are uh, options that are upfront given to you it becomes really easy when you are able to look at those um, options and able to answer. Versus, if it's an open-ended question, again, what is the capital of the country? And there are no options given to you. What you have to do is you have to completely take support of your memory and you have to stress yourself to think and come up with an answer. Everybody appreciates if there is recognition that is there, correct? So recall is something that uh, typically should be avoided because then you are making somebody really comfortable if you are um, if you are giving them adequate information upfront to be able to move ahead on things or take certain calls or refer to things and all of that right i not expect them to recall so again is another example is uh, your operating systems before the graphical user interface came into picture everything was based on your uh, codes right so you had to really type in what is expected what is how the how eventual the actions are going to be operated Right. So if it is banking or any kind of sectors, it used to be that it is completely, say, DOS based, uh, all of those for um, the different languages, which completely based on you have to remember all of those even now. Right. So many developers I, and I struggle extremely. It is very difficult for me to read their language and very difficult to recall. So it becomes really easy when on the GUI that you see that there are upfront, there are buttons available and th therefore if you observe and look, understand the history part of it. When did uh, your computer systems go, were more um, popular or people really started uh, working on those and getting their, themselves trained is when the GUI aspect came in play, right? That is when you know that, okay, what you're doing is completely in your control because I can see it up front. I can see what I'm doing. I don't have to really tax my uh, mind to learn a language, memorize it, and have those codes and all of that, right? So that is another one, one example. Okay. So when we say that recognition is something that is um, an advantage from a GEO aspect, and you should always see to it that your interface is something that uh, your user can quickly uh, recognize when they land up on. What does recognition really mean? Okay, It means that on your interface, and when you're saying interface, it's a combination of few things. It is, a, it is content that the user has created, accessed, right? It is some um, functionalities, features that are there, right? It could be certain access of uh, 
help, guidance that the user needs, right? Or there could be certain sections that the user needs to, um, you know, access. So, so certain sections that are available, right? So it's a combination of things. If you look at this, both the content and the interface should be made easy to access via recognition, right? Not recall, right? Imagine something like this no, is not up front there. We have got used to so many things that we sometimes don't realize that with the absence of this, how difficult things would be, right? And when we really land up on some kind of a difficult interface, that is when we start seeing that we start missing things, right? When we Then we spoke about that, OK, uh, content is as much important as much as interfaces. Recognition of content is as much as important. Be, ha being ha having a quick access to content is very important, upfront access, OK? So recently visited, What's, what are your recent searches? What are the recent tasks that you have operated? Your past histories, OK? Imagine that you did not have access to all of this. This recent searches were not saved anywhere. And you had to really remember what was that previous search that I did? I want to really you know, type in it again. And it did not store that. Imagine the kind of experience that you would have. <clears throat> Another is, what are the features that you then develop for the user? So that, you know, other than the system doing that work for you, the user does it for themselves, right? They create their own, own set of um, uh, set of uh, um, the you know things where you can really make buckets, really, right? That was the word that I was looking for. So you really give them uh, containers and buckets where they can store things and they can reaccess it, right? Again, that is a recognition that you those are features for recognition that. A product creates for the users. Not necessarily everything is some you know everything the um, product cannot really give you. So you're creating favorites. You're creating a wish list. Why do you add things to the wish list? Because you don't want to remember it. You don't want to write it in your notepad. You don't want to take pictures of what you've recently seen, and you want to put it in a wish list, right? So you would have this. Your shopping lists. All of these are some things that you know. These are things where your content is something that you put it in containers so that you can really access it quickly again. OK? Now, that see, what we looked at was recognition. OK, this was something that we looked at recognition. Now, look at let's look at an example of you know, all of these gesture interfaces requires, you think about it, right? Uh, it requires the user to recall. You will install a new application or, on your mobile, OK? Or you access a new website altogether. And it has certain gestures by which things are going to be operated, right? Imagine that uh, uh, you are accessing um, something on your mobile, okay, and uh, you are wondering that how do uh, how do things work here, right? And probably there is some information that is given, but then you are expected to really, um, you know, recall those things, okay? And how can the recalls be made easy? Is that you give tips on how things can be operated. You give a progressive disclosure. You give a uh, gestural affordance that is there. Now, what is progressive disclosure is? Uh, imagine that uh, you have a list that you have to access with gestures. You have to swipe up to access that list. Okay. Now, what happens is that somewhere at the bottom, and that is just one example, Okay, somewhere at the bottom, it is slightly layered. Some portion of it is slightly layered so that you know that there is a list that is um, that is uh, just you know underneath it is hidden, or you start bringing up actions, uh, right? When the user hovers on things, 
right or when you land up there you start showing up certain um, uh, certain guided icons so that you know letting the user know that okay by the way you have to do this here right you probably have to use your fingers to zoom in right spread those and zoom in things like that or you have to drag drop you know you've you've seen that there are icons that just appear for a fraction of a second uh, and then you know when you are really uh, looking at some new systems gestural affordance gestural affordance is again uh, something which visually you are able to see a gestural affordance as a simplest example i can give is a button what is affordance it tells you how that object is going to work right if there is a handle or if there is a push uh, you have a hand over it to which you know you can just place your hand over that and you can just push okay or um, it's a kettle and there's a handle over it so you know where to hold so that is an affordance right you exactly know how to handle it a button a button is supposed to be pressed so if you know you know when we say that it, earlier every button used to have its own bevel uh, some thickness to it and all of that right so that was affordance gradually we have come to uh, uh, we've seen that users have evolved they can recognize buttons versus normal content so the affordance has decreased okay that is what we, it means by affordance so so just to help on gestures there is affordance that is given to that ui so that uh, so that there is uh, information that is given to the user that this is how you have to really operate this right so what we've seen are two examples here one is that give uh, things up front to the user so that there is least recall you don't have a cognitive load on the user they are able to take really see their content see whatever they've recently done and um what are the what are um what are the things that they can right now do and what we've also seen is there when we are using gestures the user has to um uh, you know typically recall so how do you reduce that recall and have different ways in which the user can continue to take actions. Um, yeah, if you can read this statement. So interfaces that promote recognition give users extra help in remembering, remembering information. That is what we saw, right? Be it about a task, any items, content that they have created, accessed, or any functionality that is there, see to it that the user is able to rec recognize it more than you know expecting the user to recall it. How do you do that? Things that we just saw, right? Giving things upfront to the user so that they can really access things quickly. Can I add here? Uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Can you go to the next slide, please? OK. The next one? The, the one, yeah. Please. Recognition. Oh, no, the, the previous one. Recognition and recall. This so one? yes, hmm. yes. Thank you so much. So recognition and recall, understand these are both are the cognitive process. Now, how we can um, remember these things, this principle in our daily life, understand for that you need to have a little study about the memory. Okay. So when anything is rec recognition, it means that person have something, the past experience, that pattern has stored into your memory. That's why you can recognize the faces, you can recognize the voice. Okay, even on the telephone, let's example, your friend is calling after five years or 10 years or even 20 years. You will recognize that if that voice has stored into your memory. Okay, you will remember that. Uh, sorry, you will recognize that. But for the recall, the things is like you are retrying the information from your brain. Okay, again, it's from the memory only. Okay, but for that, you need to uh, give a little bit, uh, 
searching. I mean, your memory keeps searching about that particular pattern. So here is a schema it's called. So that, that information store basically into your memory. Your memory search that information. And that is the process is called the recall. That's why many times you can recognize the faces, but you don't recollect the name. You take some time to recall that. Have you yeah. faced such kind of experience in your life? So that is the difference between the recognition and recall. That's why the icons, when we see the home icon, okay, if it is like the slanting lines and the two vertical lines, we always consider it as a, it's, a, it's a home. Doesn't matter like it's in uh, it's in uh, uh, which color or which uh, shape. It, it's like the blunt shape or the sharp shape, but still you will re recognize that is a home. The faces also consider for that. The logos also consider that for that. But for the recall, let's example you have practiced somewhere for the shortcuts of the uh, on the keyboard. Okay, possibly you will forget some of the things and you need to re recall that information. Okay, so yeah. uh, if you understand what Ropali and uh, what I have said, give us the at least two or three examples. Uh, one is a Google search, probably like whenever we are typing any <clears throat> name, uh, that time we have seen that uh, the link that we have opened, that is uh, the color has been changed. And the others which are not opened, those are the, uh, the uh, other color. So that is the recognition, probably. Correct. Correct. You are visually be able to see what is recently that you visited. Yes, yes. Also, uh, if you open, uh, so you are on the middle of any movie. So if you are going back to the same application and uh, it will give a appearance that uh, it is recently viewed and the progress bar. So that is also. Correct. Yeah, that's something that I have saw, seen on Netflix. Is yeah, that, yeah. You have partially seen this. Versus, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you think that, you know, I have completely seen, oh, there is something that I have left in this, you know. Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. People, I uh, understand that they are not speaking at all. Bhagyashri, Amanat, you guys need to speak about it. Okay, uh, I uh, the the Google AdWords uh, that we use, like for example, we go to a shopping site and they use some marketing strategy to keep pushing the products. So is that also something that falls into the same category? Uh, say that again. Sorry. Uh, Google AdWords. Hmm. Keep uh, they keep pushing the products that I have been browsing. So it's a part of the marketing strategy that I keep seeing products that I browsed on different e-commerce websites. Correct. So, so you mean to say that advertise keeps coming on our... Uh, yeah. We keep on seeing and that's why it's... The, the same products that, yeah. you see that yeah. I, I, I probably are shortlisted somewhere on the site or I have been looking at the products. Yes, good one, Nilesha. That's why they actually ensure that we can see the same advertise again and again so it will be remember in our memory and so when we say uh, when we really wanted to buy the product that certain names always comes in our uh, in our mind which is like beta ta, bata or whatever you have seen that you always believe that like yeah yeah this is i know the brand because you are seeing multiple times yes. correct uh rupali uh, provident so the second option the gesture option uh, is it similar like the uh, uh, visibility of system? Uh, this example is like uh, I thought it has a system visibility of system, uh, your status. Uh, so it can be an example of system visibility. System visibility, um, um, I don't know, but then it completely depends on an example that we uh, look at, right? So, and then we can consider and check. Oh. This is not really system visibility as such. This is more about... Uh, this is more about you know giving the user uh, the kind of information that the user needs to take certain actions up front okay so that is what this says but why do you why Praveen, do you think that that this is a system visibility example uh, so i am taking an action means uh, 
मैं कुछ ड्रैग कर रहा हूँ लेफ्ट टू राइट सो यहाँ पे कुछ इन्फॉर्मेशन हमको दिखा रहा है कि आई एम टेकिंग द एक्शन तो वो एक आईकॉन डाल के यहाँ पे वो इन्फॉर्मेशन दे रहे हैं कि हम एक्शन ले रहे हैं ऐसे कुछ सो मेरे को लगा ये कैन बी विजिबिलिटी ऑफ सिस्टम इसलिए see there the you know it is very easy to get, mix up some of these principles mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah there is a reason why these principles are also stated up front separately is that we take care of certain things while we are designing thinking about all of these principles and when we are testing it also usability testing it uh holistically mm -hmm. uh, testing it uh, which is you know you own you know one expert doing a a uh, review of a system looking at these principles then it becomes easier that way but if you look at certain things you know if you look at a problem or you if you look at an advantage it is going to correlate to multiple principles that is also true so multiple principles got uh, you know rightly applied therefore it worked multiple uh, uh, principles got broken that way that's the reason it did not work but what he saying rupali is the right These are the uh, gesture which uh, which we are doing it on the physical uh, screen, right? So it's right. What are you saying? Yeah, I think we can look at an example and then we can really talk about it. And I, uh, Prabhuvan, uh, why don't you just bring up an example for tomorrow's discussion? Yeah, and we definitely would want to then discuss about it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Uh, yes, Amanthe. So in Swiggy and Zomato, uh, when you open the app, uh, they show you the recent orders from the restaurants, and also if you go to the restaurant, which they will show you the recent orders. So I think that's a good example of recognition as in recall. Yes. Yes. Very good example. Yes. यहाँ से बहुत लोग Swiggy और Zomato पे हैं. I'm telling you. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to the next one because we have uh, limited time now. Uh, flexibility and efficiency of use. Okay, uh, I'll move on to the next slide um, so that uh, yeah we can detail this out. Now this is also a very very interesting one, and because we are have been using for ages some of the amazing products. from some of these successful brands uh, say be it microsoft google adobe and all of that uh, we have always experienced this okay uh, what does this mean is the ability to really approach any kind of action uh, in multiple ways you want to complete a few tasks you have come to a software to complete a task right when you come for the first time to that software you need some kind of an guidance to accomplish that task so there you expect that there is going to be you know somebody is going to be really giving me adequate information as i keep moving ahead on that task so i do that fantastic i'm happy with it it is completed tomorrow again i come the uh, uh, next day again i come so i have started becoming i i'm exactly doing that same action okay i have started using the system more often now now i have started becoming uh, uh, i have i have started becoming familiar to this uh, software and i can uh, do these actions fast now uh, after a certain time you will start thinking i am doing these actions it is taking me about 2 minutes to complete one uh, action that i've been taking is there any other way that i can do this faster can the system help me so you will start exploring and see oh there is this you know i can save this action and uh, either okay and it will do it for me i have to just save the steps that i have done or put a formula if it is another software i have put a formula and it will just execute this for me or i can use my keyboard to really uh, take this shortcut so uh, what we are seeing here is as a novice user versus a expert user and all in between there are different ways that you can uh, help the user to take those actions right that is what it means 
you give the flexibility okay and you make your product efficient for different users who have different competencies right when you're saying competencies it is about how much what is your of competency levels i need to say okay so how much are you competent using your product probably i've just started level 1 or i have slightly you know i want to do things faster now level 2 level 3 and then now i'm an expert i want to really do these things fast quickly i want to move out to the move ahead to the next thing that i'm doing so what the system is able to support you is from your journey where you started as a novice to your journey as an expert or a power user and all in between it is giving you different ways of doing the tasks that you're doing and it could be the same task and it is the same task that we are talking about just one task as a first time user to a power user you can do the same task in different ways okay how do now let's look at certain examples okay i'll come to this slide later okay so we know that you know on interfaces as a new user i might want to click on an, a menu and i want to, want to read all of these things and i would want to take those actions i want to do cut and i want to do paste and all of that okay i'll depend when i'm a new user i'll depend on everything is there stated up front on the user interface once i start becoming an expert i will start using the keyboard shortcuts correct correct yeah then we've seen in photoshop i don't know how many of you have used this but i have used it because i was about to raise this point perfect krishna <laughs> so i think we've already always been in awe of this whoever has done worked in photoshop would uh, be able to understand the uh, ui that i'm showing here in photoshop and who have not, I'll just explain this to you quickly. You know, imagine that you are doing a bulk of actions. You know, you want to have a set of images and you want to apply exactly the same type of filters. You want to crop them in the same type, uh, same dimensions, right? So what you will to start with, what will you will pick up an image. You will do that, crop, you know, apply the filter, uh, uh, you know, um, resize it, save it, close it. O open the next image exactly do all of those oh, goodness there are too many okay so uh, again the second image you ex exactly do all of those four five steps you keep doing it and then you get frustrated because there are 10 more files that you have to do photoshop allows you to when you open that file you know you open set of files or you open the file what it does allows you to do you do those actions you wreck record those actions for yourself so you see this record button so whatever you're doing on that one image whatever you're doing you're applying a filter you're cropping it you're adjusting certain things whatever you do it will record it you can stop that recording and every different image that you pick up you just have to keep using this button here which is a play button and it will play all of those actions okay and these are different actions that you have stored right so this is an amazing uh, feature, right? And people who are reached to an expert level in Photoshop, they would they really appreciate this. You know, it imagine the time that it saves, and uh, how satisfied that experience is for that uh, user, right? So what are these called? There is a term that is uh, is these are accelerators. What are these accelerators? Basically, you can accomplish your task quickly. OK? Now, it also states huh, there is also a disclaimer here. Accelerators, would you give an accelerator to a new user? You would not. You generally will put it in some drawer, hide it, rakh de, rakh denge. So that only when they start becoming, you know, people who are comfortable with your system, now they can start using accelerators. That is typically there. The reason is that you don't want to be in the way of new users, 
right new users was like kya hai this is like too much yeah this looks like very complex as a system you know this talking about actions what is all of this i don't want to i just want to have something as simple something that i can recognize and quickly uh, complete my tasks okay but these accelerators are something which you, you always observe power users power users will always explore the product enough to see to it how can i do my tasks faster than what i did yesterday or day before right so while you give accelerators see to it that these accelerators are in a place that expert users will look for it and find it and fetch it and be able to use it right okay another aspect of this is like you know so what you've done really is for a novice kind of user you have given things simple and for expert users you have given flexibility and you have added one more feature so that you can do things faster okay you might want to have different ways again you might want to have some keyboard shortcut something else i'm just i know photoshop i'm not saying photoshop is doing that but i'm saying to reach a specific um, complete of a specific task you could give the user multiple ways of doing things but see to it that excessive duplication of functionality and having it at multiple place is also a risk it is costly right so you limit that so while you are taking these decisions see to it whatever is really necessary whatever it really needs so many different types of ways of doing things do that right so be calculative in that okay what else another example from photoshop right you can create your own workspaces how do you want to position things okay i you know this is a control that you are giving to the user this is a ui uh, control that you are saying okay you create your workspace so that you can right not everything can, the system can do it for you because it again we looked at that thing right it becomes expensive right so rather than i dictating or you know when i say i it is the product dictating uh what are the different workspaces as an expert with your personalization you can put things in place so that you can increase your efficiency so this is an example of flexibility that you are giving to your another type of user right okay to the to end uh, of this is users with different competency levels can choose the method that works best for them that is what we saw shortcuts and accelerators are unseen by the novice users right and they will access it they will find it because they are the type of people that they have reached an expertise and they want to speed up things so they will find it not that we have to really hide hide it in any way but you know something that is not upfront there but they can really quickly find it also so if you look at this example right see it's slightly grayed out slightly duller so this is secondary and this is primary that, that is what it means one way of looking at it there are shortcuts that are there you can use it but you know if you are a new user you would want to keep attention you will just ignore it and there are so many times you know people just ignore it and keep so if you you use xd right all most of us use um, adobe xd right you've seen that if you have to jump between those tabs where you are really uh, jumping between the first design tab and the second is the prototype tab when you are jumping it there is always also a sh uh, keyboard shortcut that is there how many times do we use it completely based on uh, if you are interested and willing to use shortcuts otherwise there is a way to just go to that tabs and keep jumping right go to share go to prototype all of that you can keep doing right but the sh shortcuts is not not are not coming into your way but they are available for the users to really use them if they need to yes okay this slide i missed out so to get now that we have understood this right what is required for novice users what is required for expert seasoned power users for them for novice users you want to have things guided it is could be a slower method again as i said xd i don't have xd right now open but you will have to travel your cursor to go to those tabs 
right versus faster methods is you can use your keyboard right this slightly slows down step by step method you know gradually you feel guided and then i can give you a step by step method and uh, example here most of us could have used jira right here now there is a way in where how you search for things right now one is that you search for things or you uh, place them in uh, in in boards so that you can access those if you look at power users who know jira in and out you know what they would do is in advanced search they can put the search string in a manner that you know with all of that you know what do i really all of those keywords they will put in a way so that they can just find exactly what they want to have right so there are simpler ways gradual guided step by step methods that have to be there for novice users however there also has to be a support for your because these are people are always going to be translating into uh, these users right and again you have to start thinking about your product am i launching my product is it a launch of a product would you start supporting it with expert and seasoned and power users no we are into the age of agile right we are into smaller releases right so what you do is that you have the first launch with everything that your novice users going to need it you move ahead you start gradually start supporting for export users so different ways of looking at it so whenever you are um, launching your features or your product or whatever it is right keep in mind that you don't have to struggle and do everything at first go right so uh, the, uh, when we say uh, anything that we are doing for power users it is less guided uh, it is um, a faster method saves time these are accelerators that we call it doesn't get in the way of new users new users can still go in their way of doing you need to have equal focus on both of these aspects not necessarily slow things down for export users or not expect uh, new users to really struggle with you know and feel overwhelmed with uh, what we uh, offer here for power users yeah i think i have covered all slides now in reference to this yeah okay thoughts i think the the best uh, examples would also be we have a lot of features in xc right one is a repeat grid i think that is also one of the good uh, ease of use uh, feature and mm. also the padding feature that you have in it so we, where you don't have to you know spend a lot of time fixing the layouts manually by you know resizing every layer or every uh background or anything moving around things hmm. yeah yeah uh, uh, i think in amazon so uh, when you try to order something that has a recurring thing like suppose you order medicine or uh, pet food uh, they, they show you an option subscribe and save that will let you order uh, in like next next month so then you don't have to order it again so i think that's also a good example of Flexibility and yeah, something where you put, yeah, got it. So what you're saying is that you want to repeat orders. Yeah, so it will automatically order that thing if you subscribe it. So you will get it next month automatically. Uh, I, I haven't used it, so I don't know how the payment system works. Yeah. yeah so yeah, but yeah. Correct. And that is also like, you know, like what you said, exactly right now you are an amazon user you are confident about it and every month you go back and you probably uh, again want to have that uh, liquid uh, uh, refill right you say you know your uh, uh, what is it called utensils uh, liquid wash that is there you want to refill it every month i am doing exactly the same time same thing now i want expect some efficiency that is what you are saying right yeah. and so the the system is allowing you to set that for you so that it can you can rather than you know probably it will remain even i've never used it but i've seen it yeah so, yeah correct and then again you know to that principle you know imagine if you tie it back to recognition rather than recall no i don't have to keep remembering it you know every time 
so it what happens is when you go to amazon it will say by the way uh, you have set this for next month you want to do you know you would want to you know i don't want to really recall and remember that oh every month i have to do this so it's the system is helping me to uh, you know set it for myself so you you know there is some kind of definitely if you start slightly thinking in a different way you will see that there are multiple heuristic principles that get aligned with certain things and that is why it works right eventually why principles are again broken down so that we are able to make good solutions uh, and see problems but they work together yeah, yeah. and then anybody else bagyashri yeah i have uh, one example hmm. yes, priyanka priyanka yeah in dribble website so they are providing the shortcuts to perform the action so they use the shortcut l uh, which is for like so this can be easily used by beginners and the expert and one more example is uh, in xd photoshop and any other uh, softwares they are providing a list of files that the user had recently worked on so the list helps the user to open the files quickly without navigating through the folder so which is also uh, reduces the time and efforts of the user I guess. Great example. And if you look at even now, right? So while I'm, if I'm, you know, see, here is an interface that I can see. Now this is very guided. I can do everything. I know what I'm doing here. Once I have completed my task, I would want. I can use a slideshow here. I can from here also. I think can I do a slideshow? Yeah. See here also, it is giving me a slideshow to do. It is also give me a shortcut to do the slideshow another way of doing it i don't want to completely do a slideshow where i miss out on all these or some of these thumbnails so i can just do full screen here right so it is giving me a flexibility on something similar that i want to achieve and in slightly different ways also right yes yeah what else Hey, Bhagyashri, I want to hear you. Yeah, uh, I don't have any examples for now. OK, no problem. Yeah. You can bring those tomorrow. Yeah, yeah sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, anybody else? Any thoughts? Yeah, don't know your example of the full screen versus here. Which may be a part of that where you can truncate the toolbar itself. If you can press escape. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. look amazing, isn't it? So there are this is one more way of doing things. But these are expensive, right? Because the product has to put so much of uh, effort in this, right? To develop these things. But these are like established products now. They are, what they are going to be doing is they are going to be really spending money on building efficiencies. Once your product to product comes to a stage that it cannot grow, as in you cannot add more features, you start bringing more and more efficiencies. That doesn't mean that, you know, from start, you don't have to bring anything only after you reach a stage. But then the struggle at the initial onset of products is that basic to dena hai. Basic to dena, jo jitna expected wo dena hai, then you start making the user, you know, giving, adding more and more efficiency again, because there is cost to that say. One more example, right? Now is that your personalization that we saw. Uh, we give filters, right? Now we uh, give filters to users. What we can also do is uh, your sorting and filtering and all of that. You save all of these things for the user. So every time the user doesn't have to do um, you know, exactly those tasks. So that is one way of also building efficiencies see uh, so google meet pe bhi jo unmute karne ka option aata hai wo bhi control d se aata hai and also there are lots of shortcut in browser also so chrome browser mein bahut sare shortcut bhi kaam karte hain correct audio ka playlist hai youtube ka playlist hai YouTube का playlist है, so वो keyboard action लेते हैं, तो next key करने से वो fast forward होता है। Correct. 
okay. yes that fa especially the fast forward thing and the speed thing new users will not use start using these things but people who are more like users who come often to youtube and they know what are the videos they'll say ye recipe mujhe pata hai i want to really quick, quickly watch this just key milestones i want to look at and the done i'm done yeah so they are also giving the option in mobile also see if i double tap or three tap in the mobile in youtube okay. so wo fast forward hota hai so 10 second ya 20 second correct okay correct, hmm. correct. okay any more uh, creating profiles on netflix mm -hmm. so like if my kid is watching so he has, she has her own profile so i don't so there is content only available for kids yeah so there is flexibility that you are giving there are the two examples in my mind uh, i think someone already mentioned about amazon so last time when i ordered one oil from the amazon and it asked me like do i want to repeat that every particular time for example every monthly or every three months and on that they are giving me the offer so somewhere they are encouraging me to buy that product again and again and also giving me the facility to you know if you are selecting you don't need to remember and recall we will keep on ordering for you yeah yeah that uh, that's the example that amanat also gave yes yes yeah. and the second thing is whenever we are going or uh, doing a pay paytm or for example uh, am a uh, google okay so we are uh, location is like the the main thing like where we are going from a to b okay sometimes that uh, auto wala is not a very if you are local auto wala i'm talking about not the ola uh, or uber so you are just need to that map okay but next time again uh, you are going through that you that will show that the the uh, history uh, where you have gone so you can select that one instead of just typing the entire address correct correct so while you are starting to type the address it will give you options on what you have recently visited so that it is handy for you correct so imagine that is good for the device mm. it will good for the older people mm. okay so they don't need to type who are having the challenge to typing and also that's for them like you just select that one and the things has done correct yes yes this uh, this option also be available in the google uh, map also so i can add my favorite address like home or office i can add those addresses in correct. google maps so i can easily route to my current location to home correct you can set via, yourself via voice ha uh, via voice command yes yeah uh acha uh, so this example i think also aligned with the recognition other than recall right yes it does so yes. so <laughs> those examples so what even um, uh nilesh mentioned right that he wants to really categorize between uh, his daughter's movies and his movies and all of that finally it is the same list right yes. imagine that you know why is it giving you all of that flexibility is because rather than having a big list of things that every time that he has to pick up what is for his daughters he is putting a setting that probably this is her age and therefore you know you just show up movies which are appropriate um, for her but so that is flexibility that is it is giving you while since it is upfront uh, showing you that information a quick access it is recognition yes yeah So when also, I give another example, example yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Namita. Go ahead, Namita. Yeah, just another example is there, like a zoom in and zoom out option. So we can do by clicking on the plus and uh, minus. That is a visible action. But also we can uh, control it uh, by using mouse, uh, like uh, sorry, the keyboard yeah. shortcut, control plus, control minus, or control one two, like correct. that. Correct, correct, correct. Or we can control and uh, dra uh, scroll. Yeah, the zoom in, the zoom out. Yes, for the expert users. Yes. Yes. Uh, I have one example. Mm, yes. That is, if I put any address first time for any app in Android mobile. So next time onwards, uh, if any another app ask me to put the address, so they in the bottom we can see the suggestion, like last time. Uh, the same address uh what i uh, have entered 
so this time also need to enter the same so if i click on the same thing the tab appear uh, in the button so if you click on that this address uh, field will be automatically filled there right the yeah uh, but it will sometimes it will be uh, not good for security purpose yes exactly i was just going to be talking about that is you know there is some amount of uh, ethical behavior that is also very important especially because we are creating these responsible products right so what is ethical behavior when in the product how are you building efficiencies versus uh, seeing to it that the user's data is uh, handled responsibly right so these are things that also very important yeah somebody was saying something yeah uh, i have one example but I, i'm not sure whether it's come under this this uh, this one so in google pay when you uh, open the qr code and if you are in a low light condition the flashlight automatically turns on so uh, i don't know if it's under this the flashlight or uh, no, say that again sorry so uh, in google pay when you open the qr code right uh, so and if you are in a low light condition the flashlight automatically turns on but it also gives you the option from the screen itself to turn it on or off okay so, so he's talking about the scanner so when in general when you're trying to pay through you uh, qr code right you do you open the scanner if there yeah, is yeah, yeah. in the flight in in that area right where it can actually scan, read the scanner yeah uh, the app automatically automatically turns on the flash in your phone right would you really categorize it here in this section um, yeah hmm right so i is it error prevention that it is doing here because what here what we are saying in flexibility and uh, efficiency of use is that uh, um, it is basically how do you how do you sim you know simply have an ex have a experience for a new user and how do you start supporting with uh, newer uh, fee you know actions uh, to simplify things that is how what you are doing now what you are talking about is more about would you categorize it more like an error prevention here or something else that, that could that is a very important feature that you spoke about but probably you could align it with something else not not flexibility and uh, efficiency of use so think about it so you should definitely speak and give the example just ensure which which principle it will be we are talking about if suppose you find that example okay note it down and just go through your the list uh, which is initially rupali has shared with those all uh, principles just try to see that even you can do this self exercise also and you got definitely you need to be uh, speak on the platform yeah 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 and there is it is all right you know we we coming up with different examples that is all right something could be appropriate some things may not be but this is the forum to really confirm so this is great i i am i'm so happy that you know without looking at the people's list on the right hand side now i'm able to recognize voices we have not met most of us but we are just by hearing each other now we can recognize voices glad that the design team is talking and we have to talk designers have to talk right so very important okay. and uh, you know th th that is also uh, i think a thread for you know some future sessions that we should uh, start you know consider is about com communication especially communication from a design aspect right but that's for later so great uh, very collaborative glad that everybody spoke and for tomorrow uh, let's bring up with all of these examples something that probably are confusing you can bring those still up and then we can react to it we can see if it falls into this bucket not this bucket bring up all of those examples yeah yeah so before closing the winding up this session to pali i wanted to request all of us uh, that when we are bringing that uh, the example and adding into the ppt and if it is a business related thing from for example people talk about the amazon swiggy mm -hmm. uh, uh, nike or whatever the product they wanted to mm -hmm. see from the even business side okay we are learning definitely for the designing perspective but how the business is also playing into that as i gave the example of i am just ordering the oil for today's need but again but the amazon is reminding me do you want for the 3 months after also so and that the repeated order so how they are getting the money from it all the strategies a bite by bite we just if you focus on that you will learn also a lot 
And so when you are designing any application, it will be helpful to understand not only from the user perspective, but from the business perspective. And that is, trust me, it is going to help you a lot in the, your career. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and let's meet again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 B